Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. It says, inquire not after their gods. That unk is a representation on how they serve their god. There's a philosophy represented behind that unk on how they serve their god. That has nothing to do with the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I don't care about what little nice cunning little words behind it comes behind it. It is false. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe in God? Yeah. You believe in God. You say you believe in God, right? All right. Well, let me show you something. Give me First John 2 and 3. Let me show you something. What's your name? You said Renace, right? Renis. Renis. My apologies. So, a lot of our people, we love to say that we believe in God. Okay? All of our people say it. We believe in God. You say you believe in God. Even those people that's in these cars and they'll never pull over. All these people up and down the street. They will all say they believe in God, but here we right here talking about God and what God requires of us, and nobody actually wants to hear or obey the word of God. Watch this. Let me show you something. Come on. This is the book of John. Chapter, I mean, this is the book of 1 John. Chapter 2 and verse 3. Listen good. Listen good. And hereby we know that we know him. So it says, hereby we know that we know him. The him is referring to God. This is how we say we know God or how we know that we know God. Because a lot of us will claim that we have a personal relationship with God or that we love God, right? Watch this, watch this. Who is anybody else to say that another person don't? Well, say that again. Who is anybody else to say another person don't have a relationship with yeah, God? Are these my words or is this the Bible? That's the Bible. Okay, so I'm not saying anything. This is what the Bible says. Come on. And hereby we know that we know him. So the Bible says, hereby we know that we know him. Come on. If we Wait. slow down, read. If if we uh -huh. keep his commandments, it says, if we keep his commandments. That's right. If we keep his commandments. Are you married? You're not married. Have you been married before? Do you have children? How do you show that you love your family? Do you beat them upside the head? Do you slap them? Do you take your wife? If you want to show love to your wife, and you say, baby, I don't know how everybody in the world love their wives, but the way I love my wife, I need you to sell some of that vagina you got on the street. Is that how you love? No, right? So the scripture says, here it is that we know we know God if we keep his commandments. Watch this. Listen up. He that saith, I know him. So now we're given a scenario where there are people in the world that will say they know God. You got to examine yourself and say, is this me? Come on. He that saith, I know him. Come on, like you did. Come on. And keepeth not his commandment. And you what? And keepeth not his commandment. And keepeth not the commandments. Come on. Is a liar. I did not say that. I didn't say that. That's not my words. That's not my opinion. That is not my prerogative. Right. That is what the Bible says. Right. So what the officer is trying to show you, it doesn't matter what you think that thing believe or uh, makes sense of or what you think it represents. God says you're not supposed to do it. Right. Exodus chapter 20. Right. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I'm going to show you to you. I'm going to show it to you. Because if you truly believe in God, it should be no problem to throw that away. You can keep the chain. Listen, listen. What? Okay, and this is an ephod. This is actually biblical. That ain't. That is not. God actually told us, told the Levites to make one of these. So watch this. Come on. You mean it, This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 3. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So listen, brother, really. The Bible says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. How I've confused you. You have something around your You want me to take it off? You want me to take it off? No, I'll take it off. You want me to take it off? 
I'll take it off. This is what I'm saying. Uh huh. Listen to you. Go ahead. You Go ahead. You have something around your neck. Uh huh. Saying is worshiping something, right? Uh huh. Did I didn't say that. That's not what, what I said. What, what is it? I said that right there. Okay. That has. Listen, listen. But you have listen, listen, to listen. I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Uh, I'll show you. Tell me what it is. Give me that. We'll get that. Exodus chapter 28, I believe it is. Give me the E5. Let's do it. So the brother wants to know what's around my neck. I'm gonna show it to you. 28 and 8. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna show it to you, brother. Listen. But listen, listen, watch this. Watch this. I can show you what's on around my neck in the Bible. Show me that in the Bible. Watch this. Come on. You got it? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 28 and verse 12. Bring it out. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the, of the ephod uh -huh. for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And Aaron shall bear their names be before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. For a memorial, read. And thou shalt make ouches of gold. So it says thou shalt make ouches of gold, meaning what? In casings where the stones will actually sit in it. Come on. And two chains of pure gold. So he had two chains of pure gold to put it together. Come on. At the ends. Mine's just silver. His was gold. Come on. Of weather and work shall thou make them. Start at verse 15. Give me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15. Verse 15. And thou shalt make the breastplate of so judgment. It says, so it says thou shalt make a breastplate. Come on. Of judgment. With cutting work, uh -huh. after the work of the ephah. Of the what? Of the ephah. Of the ephah. So he's going to tell you exactly what it's called. This is an ephah. Come on. Thou shalt make, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, uh -huh. and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen. Shall thou make it for four square? It shall be be double. So it says four square shall it be. So that means it's going to have four equal sides. Come on. Like a square. Let's go. And a span shall be the length thereof. And a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set it in settings of stone. Thou shalt set in it settings of stones. Come on. Even four rows of stones. Got four rows. That's one, two, three, four. Come on. The first row shall be sardis of topaz and cubaco. Carbuncle. Come on. This shall be the first row. That's the very first row. That's what you got right here. Come on. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. So you right here, I got an emerald. A sapphire and a diamond. Come on. And the third row. And the third row. A Libra. And a gate. And a emphasis. And the fourth row. A barrel. And an onyx. And a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. You see that? Now mine is set in silver. But the one that God wanted was set in gold. So I ask you again. Mine is actually biblical. Right. God actually said to make it. Show me that in the Bible. My point exactly. Exodus 20 and verse 2. One more time. Let's go. So we're going to show you what God says. Because remember the Lord said. He that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. You don't come across to me as a brother that got a reason to lie. Right? You're not a liar. So don't, so let's see if you truly love God because sometimes we're misinformed. Sometimes we think we can just do whatever we want and since God knows my heart, it's all good in the love of Jesus. But let's see what God actually says. Come on. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So God says thou shalt have no other gods before before me. Come on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. So he said don't make a graven image that is in a similitude or a likeness or a comparison of things that are above. Come on. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or the earth beneath. Come on. Or that is in the water under the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not bow down 
thyself to them. So it says, thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. Because that ark right there has a specific doctrine that one believes and follow their lives after. Exodus 20, Exodus 20 and 3, 20 and 5. Okay, that right there actually has a philosophy behind it. Right. That's what it comes from. But you don't know that. To you, it might just be, hey man, it's the key of life. You know, I care about life, you know, I blah 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 blah. But God says, no, brother, don't do that. You as God's chosen people are a separate and holy people, undefiled person. That's how you're supposed to carry yourself. That's not a light thing. You wearing that around your neck is not a light thing, brother. Come on, watch this. Verse 5. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Yeah. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Nor what? Serve them. Nor serve them. One fashion of serving it is putting it around your neck. Because there's something that's behind that. There's a doctrine behind that. And I'm going to prove that. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy 12 and I believe 19. Really quick. I'm going to show you because this is what God commands us whenever we are amongst the other nations or we learn of things of the other nations. Everybody has their own way of representing their God. They all have their own holidays. They all have their own philosophies, right? And then there's always a, a dress code or a style of, of dressing that comes behind it. Like Muslims, they got those big turban things and all of that. There's always a dress code and a lifestyle and stuff that they wear and how they carry themselves behind their beliefs, right. all right? Uh, what? Uh, da, 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 da. yes, give me that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12, and verse 29. When the Lord thy God shall cut off nations before thee. So it says, when the Lord thy God shall cut off these nations before you, meaning in front of you, because this was right before we got the land of Israel, right? The Canaanites, the Africans, they were living in the lands. And guess what? They had a way of life. They had a philosophy, they had a God, they had a religion, they had their own uh, a severed or holy days, right? Or holidays, they had all of that set aside for themselves. So it says, once we come amongst these people, read, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land, uh -huh. take heed. It says, take heed, take heed, mean be vigilant, be aware, like the officer brought out, come on. Take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them. It says, what's a snare? Some you catch some man. It's like a trap, right? right. Now, does anybody fall into a trap willingly? No. no. So that means it's something that a lot of times you overlook. So God says, beware lest you overlook something and you get snared into what? By following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee. He says that's from, that you be snared from following them. Right? Come on. And that thou inquire not after their God. It says in what? Thou inquire not after their gods. It says inquire not after their gods. That ark is a representation on how they serve their God. There's a philosophy represented behind that ark on how they serve their God. That has nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I don't care about what little nice cunning little words behind it come behind it. It is false. Come on. And that thou inquire not after their gods, saying... How did these nations serve their God? I wonder how he served his God. Hey, what's that little, oh, what that mean? Oh, this brother, this is the, the cross of life. That's what this is. Oh, really, the cross of life. That is very interesting, brother. Tell me more about the cross of life. What does it represent? What's the left side? What's the right? What's the top? What's the bottom? God said, don't do it. That's right. You see that? But if you believe in God, you will follow that. If, if you believe in God. Come on. Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so. Said, Even so will I do likewise. Oh, you like to wear an ox to represent that? Sure, I'll do that too. There's nothing wrong with life. Come on. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. You see that? It says thou shalt not do so. That is why we go back to Habakkuk 2.18. Habakkuk chapter 218. That is why he said this. Because everything that you wear, there's always a doctrine behind it. What's the difference between that cross and a Christian cross? Neither one of them is in the Bible, but they both teach two different things. Right? They both represent two different things, but each person that wears either the ark or the cross, they all think they're following God. It's a snare. It's a trap. It's something you overlook. Come on. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 19. 
18, what profited the graven image? So now God says, look, I told you back in Deuteronomy not to inquire about those gods. Now you didn't got snared. So now I'm trying to reason with you, brother. What does that ark profit you? Nothing. It profits you nothing. Come on. That the maker thereof hath graven it. Come on. The molten image. It's a molten image, is it not? Come on. And a teacher of lies. A what? Of lies. It's a teacher of lies. You already spit it out the lie. It's a cross of life. Who the hell said that that was a cross of life? Where did God say that that was the cross of life? Where on earth did he say that? I'm going to show you what God did say was life. Baruch 4 and 1. Baruch chapter 4 and 1. What does the Bible say? Not what does man think or what did I think or what some other brother told me. Or I went, I went over here to Africa and, and then I saw how they was living and it was great and they just seemed so free. Right? Come on. This is the book of Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. What does God say is the key to life? Come on. This is the book of... This is a what? This is the book. The what? The book. The cross. The book. No, the book. The book. The book. Come on. Of the commandments of God. Come on. And the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it. All they that keep what is written in the book. Right. Read. Shall come to life. Shall what? Come to life. Shall yes, what? Come bro. to life. That's how you going to yeah, come to life, bro. brother. That ark is not going to give you no life. That right there is a teacher of lies. Another man taught you that. But God gave you his law. God gave you his commandments. God gave you secrets of the world. Give me that. Psalms 147. Psalms 147 verse 19. You are a special man, a special creature. And we out here trying to be like some doggone Africans. You ain't African. You an Israelite. What's your name, bro? Roy. Nice to meet you. I'm Judah, bro. You understand what's... Have you ever, ever heard any of this information coming out? Watch this. Let me show you something. Come on. That's the book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. God said he showed his word unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? The 12 tribes of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so. It says he has not dealt so, read, with any nation. Meaning what? God is only dealing with you. Right. The Christian world would tell you that God is all loving for all nations and teaches everybody the same. But the Bible says that he only gave his word unto the Israelites yes. and the other nations ain't nothing. Right. Come on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. They do not know God. The Africans don't know God, and they don't know what God requires of them. You understand? To live or call yourself a God, you must have God-like behavior. In order to get God-like behavior, you must keep God's commandments. That's what it means to be godly. You are God-like. You talk like a God. You behave like a God. You judge like a God. You carry yourself like a God. You speak life like a God. You understand? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community.